Okay, we just gotta get this salt filled up here. Kind of reminds me of the story I'm reading with my fourth graders, Caners. I'm talking about why is the sea salty? Kane, they're here. Hey, fourth graders, Mrs. Lawson here. We are just filling up the salt at my house because I love to put salt on my food. But I'm so glad you're back because we're gonna learn today why the sea is salty. So let's go ahead and get into this story, the last lesson of why the sea is salty. And we are learning today to determine the theme of a story. And I know this sounds like something you've never done before, but you actually have. And you've actually done it when you were younger too, you just might not have known it yet. So we're gonna use, we're gonna determine the theme by using key details in the text. We know we are successful when we can define what theme is, refer back to details in the text, and identify the theme of why the sea is salty. So let's talk about theme. The theme is actually the message or the lesson that the author wants you to take away from the story. So some questions Miss Lawson likes to ask is, what did the characters learn? And then how did the characters grow? So a story that we've all read before, hopefully, or heard at least, is The Three Little Pigs. So I'm asking you guys, what is this something you learned from this story? I know something that I learned is the pig who took his time and built that brick house showed us that hard work pays off because he was able to save all of them. So that's a lesson or a theme from one of those stories. And we're gonna practice finding the theme of the story today. So you are going to read this um, for your foundational skill. It's called Tall Tale or Truth. And you're gonna really focus on your words with prefixes dis, re, and non. And remember that dis and non both mean the, make the word, um, the root word change their meaning or to the opposite meaning. And re, means that something is happening again. So this is an important passage because we are focusing on some tall tales coming up soon. So get that read, hear yourself read and see um, how you sound, where you can improve. That's one of my favorite um, foundational skills that we do. Vocabulary, this is souls. And it's not like your soul um, inside your heart, like your soul as a human, it's like the soles of your feet or the soles of your shoes. So it's S O L E S bottoms of your shoes or your feet. Now the word that you need to figure out today is wriggled. It looks like she's kind of moving around. And then the part of the story that uses the word wriggled is he wriggled his toes, but it didn't help. Then the ants began to bite. What is going to happen in this story today? You guys have an idea of what wriggled means? It means twist and turn in a quick movement. Is that what you said? Yeah, so twisting, maybe shaking, kind of like what this girl's doing. All right, let's get to reading. So we are on chapter seven, which is called Ants. Oh, no. The giant was happy. It was good to be able to help the villagers. And all he had to do was stretch out his legs and relax. The giant didn't realize that his large feet were resting on an ant hill. Thousands of angry ants stormed out of their home and onto the giant's feet. At first, the giant thought something was tickling him as the ants swarmed over his soles and onto his toes. He wriggled his toes, but it didn't help. Then the ants began to bite. Each bite stung. So you can kind of see in the picture here, he put his feet on the ant hill and all those ants are crawling up his feet. That would be awful. And we have this question over here. It says, based on dialogue, so what people are saying, what do we learn about the giant? Ow! cried the giant, trying to lie still. Ow! 
He wanted to shake the ants off, but he wasn't able to move because the villagers were walking along his legs. He wanted to scratch the bites. Could you please hurry? He asked. Ants are biting my feet. The villagers did not believe that creatures as small as ants could annoy an enormous giant. But they did as he asked and hurried along his legs to his island. Bravely, the giant sat still until the last villager had climbed off his legs. So from what's being said, what do we learn about the giant? We know if we look, ow, ow, and he says, please, so what do we learn? Right, I learned that he's in a lot of pain, yet he's still sitting there with his feet in the anthill, right? So what does that show me about him? Yeah, I would say he's brave and he's putting those villagers, you know, in their journey and across his legs. That's more important to him than shaking those ants off his feet. So what else does that tell us about him? Yeah, it tells us that he's kind so that he's brave and that he's kind because he also says, please hurry. He's not like, hurry up. He's like, please hurry guys. All right, as the boy led them away to get salt from the cave in the hills, the giant lifted his bare feet from the ant hill. Quickly, he bent his knees and shook his feet as hard as he could over the sea. The thousands of ants looked like little seeds as they were flung into the air and then dropped down into the water. The giant looked at his feet right here. The ants had left bright red marks where they had bitten him. He lowered his bare feet into the sea slowly and gently. He knew if he made waves, they would wash ashore and sweep through the villages. Oh, that poor giant's face. Look at him. I feel so bad for him. Then he rested his feet on the seabed and let the cool water take the sting out of the bites. While he waited for the villagers to return, he ate their gifts of boiled rice and prawns, boiled rice with prawns and dried fish. I must ask them to bring dried squid next time, he thought. He closed his eyes and thought about the cave. This was the first time he hadn't waited outside it to make sure no one was hurt. He hoped there was no salt slides. The giant was asleep with his feet still on the seabed when the villagers returned with their bamboo baskets filled with salt. He woke with a start. How are the ant bites? The villagers asked the giant. The giant chuckled. How, uh, well, there are a lot fewer ants on the island now, thanks to me. He laughed. The villagers laughed with him. They liked this enormous man. They liked, they wouldn't go back to their island just yet. They stayed a while to keep, my goodness, they stayed a while and keep him company. Besides, there was no bridge to cross while his feet were soaking in the water. All right, chapter eight, Salty Sea. So we're going to find out our answer. At sunset, the villagers decided to return to their own island. The giant stretched his legs across the sea again. He lifted the villagers and their baskets of salt onto his legs and said goodbye. He was sad to see the people go, especially the boy. He hadn't realized how lonely he was on the island by himself. As the villagers walked back home along his legs, the giant felt something crawl over his feet. At first, he thought he was being tickled, but then he felt a bite, and another, and another. Oh no, cried the giant, it's the ants again. Once again, the giant couldn't shake off the ants. Once again, the giant politely asked the villagers to hurry, but this time, the villagers were carrying bamboo baskets full of salt on their heads. It was much harder for them to move quickly. Faster, begged the poor giant, faster. He wondered how much longer he would be able to bear the pain of the ants biting his feet. The villagers held on tightly to their baskets 
and ran along the giant's legs. They were tired from carrying their heavy loads. They gasped for air and wobbled from side to side. Do you guys think you know what's gonna happen? Good readers are always predicting. What do you guys think? All right, lock it in there. Let's see if you're right. All right, what happens to the giant's feet the second time he acted as the bridge is what we're looking for. But the giant could not wait for the villagers to get back to the island. With a roar of pain, he lifted his legs in the air. He shook his feet roughly to get rid of the annoying ants. The villagers were taken by surprise. They screamed, dropped their baskets of salt, and let them tumble into the sea. The villagers were thrown into the water. Save us, they yelled. So before we keep reading, what happened to the giant's feet the second time he acted as the bridge? Yeah, good job. So if we look back, it says right here, as the villagers walked along, the giant felt them. At first he thought he was being tickled, but then he felt a bite and another and another. It's the ants again. So he put his ants in another ant hill and they were biting him. And then what's even worse is he couldn't hold it this time. So he had to shake his legs and what happened to the villagers? Yeah, they all fell off into the sea. And now they're asking for help, save us. When this giant saw what he had done, he was very upset. He had not meant to harm the villagers. He reached across the sea and plucked them out of the water and set them on his knees to dry while he soaked his feet in the sea again. The villagers could see their bamboo baskets floating on the top of the water below them. They were empty. All the salt they had collected from the giant's cave had spilled into the water. And that is why the sea is salty. They finally figured it out, guys. That's why the sea is salty. And right here, we got a picture of it. The basket and all the salt is in the sea. So, so based on the ending, what do you guys think the theme of this story is? And remember, what we really want to know is, what did the characters learn from this story? Give you guys a few seconds to think. What do you think the villagers learned? So we know the first time his feet got hurt, and then the second time he did the same thing, and the same thing happened. So he did not learn from his mistakes, guys. And that is the lesson here. You need to learn from your mistakes. And he did not in this story. So that's the lesson we have to learn because they lost all their salt because of it. All right, your turn, your reading response for today. How do the events in these last two chapters help you answer the question, why is the sea salty? So you're just telling me, why is the sea salty? Tell me how it happened. I'm so excited that we got to read this story together, fourth graders. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.